Okay, yes, I know. Long time to upload, but I'm alive. We're here in Japan. I've been here for almost three weeks now. And uh, sorry if the quality is bad, if the, the audio is bad. I am literally on my phone. We are, as you can see, we're living in like an Airbnb type of hotel place that I booked on booking.com. Um, so the PC is in a suitcase. We are moving into our apartment this, well, the time zone difference. So I would say in like two days and then I have to get a desk. So it's going to be a bit. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about the flight because, uh, it was bad. <laughs> I hated it. Um, so we had to wake up supremely early. This flight was leaving our city at 6 a.m. So, you know, you'd be there a few hours early. So we woke up at 3, 2.30 maybe, um, and got ready. We had six suitcases three for each of us and two personal items. So you could have two checked luggages, uh, one carry-on, one personal item. So we Ubered to the airport in my local city, which is relatively small, completely dead when we got there. The, um, the workers weren't even there. It was like 4 a.m when they finally showed up or it could have been f five I don't know so we got checked in one of my suitcases was a little over the weight limit but she just put a heavy tag on it and sent it on its way so it's fine uh, it seems like if your suitcases are just a couple of pounds over they're not gonna care so um, you part with your suitcases right away uh, which is nice because then we don't have to carry them around and they are doing some kind of weird promotion or, or, or change where um, your carry-on luggage they will make checked luggage for free which was amazing because then we don't have to worry about hauling around this little mini suitcase like uh, to wherever we need to go. It's checked with our other things. So we had three checked pieces of luggage each and that was to the whole way to, to Japan. Um, so the first leg of our flight was fine. That was us uh, leaving from Pennsylvania to going, uh, going to Atlanta, Georgia. And it was about a two and a half hour flight and we had to transfer all of our luggage gets transferred to the next plane and we just had it was only an hour and a half layover the flight was on time in fact it may have even been just like a little bit early so we went to our next destination used the bathroom stretched our legs and we just waited and then we got on our next flight um uh, the first flight was just a baby plane like like holy crap it was a baby plane and now this second flight big boy plane uh, this the second flight was like 14 and a half hours and it was like a three-seater uh, me and Devin were on like the window seat in the middle seat and then a random Japanese guy was on the the aisle seat which it's just like oh great so whenever we have to go to the bathroom we have to hop over this man um luckily we didn't really have to go that much and then kind of when he got up I was like trying to like get up and use the bathroom um so we get on this second leg of the flight and they feed you relatively early like an hour and a half ish into the flight and I was prepared for not good plain food, uh, but this was awful. The plain food was so bad, like I couldn't eat it. So they give you um, like a little 
entree and then they'll give you like you know a drink like a coke or whatever uh, and then they'll do like a little dessert a little fruit cup or something but you know the all that other stuff was fine but the main entree was so bad it was just seasoned like in saucy chicken over rice and all I could eat was the rice like the chicken just had like the worst aftertaste I've ever had like a, a cheap frozen meal from the grocery store would have been better than this and it's like I paid a thousand dollars for a one-way ticket for each of us so two thousand and it's like a, a frozen thing is what like three dollars four dollars at a grocery store what they gave us was it like if I could imagine what dog food tastes tasted like that's what this tasted like it was so bad um so yeah that really set the tone for the whole flight um they feed you frequently like they came around with sandwiches but then I'm picky so <laughs> didn't really want it but it was like some like mozzarella tomato sandwich I guess um eh, yeah and they offer you drinks and it's fine but the this was uh Delta and the plane felt smaller. Everything felt more cramped than the United flight I had taken previously. Um, with the United flight, I would get up and stretch my legs. There was like a big standing area you could go to, but this that this Delta flight didn't really have that. Um, the the flight was so bad. I couldn't sleep. It was impossible to sleep. I made sure we had the little neck pillows this time no it was it was impossible to sleep it was so uncomfortable so incredibly uncomfortable like and this flight just dragged on for so long no matter how many times you got up and walked around you sat back down and you're immediately uncomfortable it was bad like it was it was it was really bad and then Devin got like sick like halfway through the flight so, eh, not good, <laughs> not good. Um, so eventually we finally land and we had a laundry list of things that we needed to get done. So before we left United States, I had went online and pre-ordered a Japanese SIM card for a Japanese phone number. Uh, it was something that I needed pretty much immediately for anything I needed to do there. Um, and I know that I, I knew that I was going to need access to the internet. So, um, as soon as we got off the plane, we got our luggage and we went to the Yamato booth because I had business there anyway. Uh, so we needed to get our luggage delivered to our hotel and then we needed to give in this customs form, uh, because we had shipped those boxes through Yamato, um, and there's already a really, really long line. It took probably 30 minutes to wait in this line and get to the counter. And then obviously there's language barrier. This is Japan. So they do a mountain of paperwork for anything and everything. So this whole process took probably over an hour. It was, and like, I've learned that next time it, and it costs like a hundred dollars to do to ship these six lug pieces of luggage to the hotel. Next time, I've learned that I need to Uber. We took an Uber anyway, and we could have shoved everything in the Uber, and it would have been fine. So, <laughs> don't deliver your luggage with Yamato from the airport. Just take your luggage into an Uber and Uber somewhere. It's really the Uber was eighty dollars, so we ended up paying like. 100 for Yamato, $80 for the Uber, when we could have just done $80 for the Uber. Uh, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> after we settled everything at Yamato, we had to go pick up my Japanese SIM card. Uh, it was easy to find the booth. Very 
It was easy to miss, but it was easy to find because it was literally like a minute down the hall from Yamato. So it was ridiculous. You had, and thank God there's some other English speaking person there to like help me because I am too oblivious. I wouldn't have figured this out. You had to pick up the phone that's on the counter and then you you hold it to your ear and it's ringing and then someone answers and you let them know like hey I'm here to pick up a sim you give them your order number and then someone will come and meet you in like five minutes could barely hear them on the phone I wouldn't have known what they were saying if I hadn't heard it from the other guy first so and we were chatting with him he's from Canada or something and he was here on a working holiday visa, which the United States doesn't have. Uh, we don't have like that deal with Japan. On a working holiday visa, you can literally take a year to go to Japan and work. It's a really easy visa to get, um, but we don't have that available in the United States. You just gotta do it the hard way. <laughs> um, so I get the SIM card and we go to a currency exchange atm so that Devin can get some yen out because i had already did it beforehand he needed some and then after that we pretty much were set we took the uber to the hotel um, the airport was about 40 minutes out this was haneda so narita is an hour and 40 minutes haneda is 40 minutes from the center of Tokyo, basically. So we took the Uber to Shinjuku, where our hotel was. I booked the cheapest hotel I could find because we were gonna be there for two weeks and your girl's not made of money. So it was like $30 a night. And we checked into the hotel and the guy that manages the hotel is perfectly fluent in English. Um, and I'll talk more about him in another video, but he explained everything to us. So, you know, he said it's, a, it's a budget hotel. So it, the hotel room was literally a room. It's a single room, uh, not big. It could fit a bed and a tiny little table and a fridge. That's it. The, uh, hotel had shared bathrooms on every floor. And on the first floor were two different shower rooms. One had two shower heads, the other had one shower head. And all that separated you from someone else doing their laundry, because the laundry was right outside, was a opaque curtain. Uh, we had no issues, no one walked in on us. We showered at obscure hours of the night, so it wasn't an issue. Um, I think we got into the hotel room and showered right away <laughs> we showered, showered right away we needed a shower um and it was at this point it was like 6 p.m and we passed out we were out we were so tired we had arrived on new year's eve the idea was to maybe nap for a bit that was the plan anyway um and then wake up in time to go to shibuya to celebrate at shibuya crossing but we were out, out, out. Like, <laughs> I woke up because there were, like, huge bells gonging at midnight. And then I realized, oh, we just slept through the new year. <laughs> and then I was just like, yeah, I'm not getting out of bed. So <clears throat> we just slept and slept and slept. And in the morning, we woke up and spent the first day exploring Shinjuku, getting a feel for everything, trying food, etc. <clears throat> if you follow my my Instagram, because my Facebook, I decided I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna just put my Facebook out there, but the posts are uh, public. So if you find that, you can see my public post. But Instagram, I have it linked in my description. So you can go find that. <clears throat> but that was our first like day and a half, basically. 
Um, yeah, the flight was awful. I don't ever want to do that again. If I did have to, I would get a layover probably in California. It's a nice half and half point between Japan and then Pennsylvania to fly from Pennsylvania to California, have a layover, maybe even like spend the night there and then go back to Japan. So if we ever came to visit the United States again, that's what we would do. And don't tell anyone, but the only reason I would visit the United States again is to go to MAGFest. So, <laughs> but, uh, that was it. That was our flight experience from hell and how I slept through the new year. But the point is, is that we started out, we entered the new year in Japan and that's what matters. So that's, that's about it for this video. Just wanted to let everyone know that I am alive. I have been stressing out hardcore over work. It's very, very hard. Uh, it gives me so much anxiety. There's so much to learn. I'm overwhelmed. I'm taking college a, co a college master's class on the side and then trying to get into our apartment and orchestrate everything and there's so much to do so this was kind of just last on my list but um, hopefully when we're set up in the apartment I can do another video uh, kind of talking about the two weeks I spent in Tokyo everything we did I'll like show little pictures on the side of things as we did but <laughs> that's it and stay tuned for more updates goodbye